Okay, last night I was awake in the middle of the night and I was distressed um, about some developments in our world and I was talking to God about it. Does that ever happen to you? Do things bother you? Do they keep you up at night? It happens to me sometimes. Anyway, I was talking with God and he reminded me of a couple of things and I thought I'd share those things with you. Number one, he reminded me that God is very much in charge. He knows what he's doing and he's going to make things right. So that was reassuring. And number two, he reminded me that there is a battle going on. God is winning and we get to fight on the winning side. We get to fight on God's side, but not in the way that some might imagine. Paul writes, for though we live in the world, we do not wage war as the world does. The weapons we fight with are not the weapons of the world. On the contrary, they have divine power to demolish strongholds. So we don't fight the way the world fights. I mean, if we did, we'd get the same results that the world gets. And we don't want those results. We want better results. So we fight a different way. We use different weapons. But what are those weapons? Well, let me suggest that there are four. Number one is our faith. We believe. Some people doubt, but we believe. We believe our world is messed up, but God is fixing things and we get to help. John writes, this is the victory that has overcome the world, even our faith. Our faith tells us who we are. It tells us that we are ambassadors of heaven. Every step we take takes the presence of Jesus into a broken world. Every word we speak is a word of healing, of help, of hope. We're sent here to earth on mission to bring eternal good into many lives. Our faith informs us. Our faith identifies us. Our faith empowers us. That's weapon number one. Weapon number two is our perspective. And I should probably change that to God's perspective. Do the people of heaven think the way the people of earth think? In case there's any doubt, the answer is no. The people of heaven have broken free from the group think that leaves us mired in the problems that don't get better here on this earth. The people of heaven have a new and different perspective a perspective that comes straight from God. And that's who you are. That's who I am. We are people of heaven. We are meant to step away from the way the people of this world think and gain God's perspective. We don't look to a political party or a news outlet for our perspective. We look to God. And you know, the most valuable thing in the universe is God's perspective. If we all had it, if we saw ourselves and saw one another through God's eyes, nearly every problem that plagues humanity would evaporate almost overnight. James writes, But the wisdom that comes from heaven is first of all pure, then peace-loving, considerate, submissive, full of mercy and good fruit, impartial and sincere. Peacemakers who sow in peace reap a harvest of righteousness. Having God's perspective that gives us a weapon to counter the groupthink that is miring our world into the problems that it has. Number three, weapon number three is our love. And some people hate, but we love. Some people are indifferent, but we care. Some people play politics, but we're above that. We have empathy, respect, compassion for other people. People matter, and the things that affect people matter to us. Paul writes, don't be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Jesus said, love your enemies. So our third weapon is our love, and our fourth weapon is our actions. Uh, you know, some people blame, some people complain, some people find fault but we choose a different route. We find opportunities. Instead of being problem-focused, we're solution-focused. While others are yelling and screaming, 
We figure out how to help, and we help. In John chapter 9, we see the disciples encountering a man born blind. And the first thing they do is try to figure out who to blame. Jesus, uh, why was this man born blind? Is it his fault? Did he sin? Or is it his parents' fault? Did they sin? And Jesus says, no, 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 no. You got it all wrong. It's not his fault. It's not his parents' fault. It's not about blame. It's about opportunity. This is an opportunity for God to show who he really is. This is an opportunity for God to show his kindness and his power. So that's what we do. We look for opportunities to do good. So those are our four weapons, our faith, our perspective, our love, and our actions. And this, by the way, is what defines a breakthrough leader. A breakthrough leader solves problems by inspiring people to think and behave differently. And that's what we do. If uh, this interests you, you might enjoy my book, Strap In, This Could Be a Bumpy Ride, The Inner Journey of Breakthrough Leaders, because we talk about this kind of stuff a great deal. It's available on Amazon. I'll leave a link in the description. And as always, if you post a video review of any of my books, please leave a link in the comments. I'd love to watch it, and if I like it, I'll add it to the list. Thanks for sharing. Thanks for liking, commenting, subscribing. It all helps. I'm Dwight Clow, and have a fantastic day.